We are here in Milan at the 35th ESMO Congress and we're heading to speak with key opinion leaders from all over Europe. And now we are joined by Professor Hilary Calvert from the University College London. London in the UK. And you are truly the pioneer of what we call PARP inhibitors. And you're going to explain to us what is this kind of a compound and in particular why it's so important for women with ovarian cancer and some other cancers too. And some other ones, yes. Well, thank you very much. Um, I started up a, a team for drug discovery in the early 1990s in Newcastle and one of the first targets that we decided to go after was PARP um, because there was evidence that PARP inhibitors would potentiate the effects of other kinds of cancer drugs. Now, at the time, the BRCA genes hadn't been discovered. Uh, I think BRCA1 was discovered in 1994 and BRCA2 in 1995. And we were the first people to make PARP inhibitors. And I think many people wondered why we were bothering. <laughs> but um, we finally came up with the first good, potent PARP inhibitor for clinical use around about um, 2000, 2001, and started on some trials. And then, of course, the observation that PARP inhibitors given on their own were really very active for tumors that had arisen in patients who are BRCA carriers um, came about. And that, that came about quite independently from two different sources. Uh, the group that I set up in Newcastle um, Professor Nicola Curtin in the group discovered it in, in a collaboration with a, a doctor called Thomas Halliday in Sheffield. And at the same time, the group at the Royal Marsden, uh, Alan Ashworth's group, uh, discovered it independently with a different PARP inhibitor and different experimental model. So really these two independent groups using different methods coming up with the same answer gave us a real um, confidence that this was was a real observation and it would be useful and wasn't just some sort of experimental um, uh, oddity. And it, it certainly seems to have been the case. The trials with the laparib are looking very promising as they are with some of the other PARP inhibitors. Is the PARP inhibitor, and maybe you can touch on very simply the mechanism of action, but is this only showing its impact on women that are BRCA positive? Um, it's showing an impact more broadly than that. And the explanation for how it works, put very simply, is that uh, PARP inhibitors inhibit one type of repair of DNA and your DNA is getting damaged all the time and it needs to be repaired all the time. Uh, patients who have a, a BRCA carriers, their, their tumors are deficient in another kind of DNA repair. And if you take out two kinds of DNA repair, one is missing in the tumor anyway, the second is taken out by the PARP, then the cells just can't survive it's sort of like belt and braces, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, they've already lost their braces and you take their belt away and then they, they can't keep going anymore. While of course all the normal tissues in the patient who are BRCA carriers have a good gene in there and so that they're fine and they don't uh, suffer toxicity from the PARP inhibitor. But we've discovered that quite a lot of patients have tumors that have the characteristics of a BRCA tumor, even though the, the patient doesn't have a BRCA mutation themselves. And so the breadth of tumors in which PARP inhibitors may be active is probably going to be much more uh, than simply patients who are BRCA carriers. And the focus now is obviously the ovarian and breast. Ovarian and breast. And I think we'll, we'll see prostate coming because men who are bracket carriers exactly. can get prostate cancer. Where are we as far as the phase of trials and what line of therapy does one have to be at before they 
can maybe be eligible for mm -hmm. a PARP inhibitor? I think the field has spread so rapidly, I'm not up to speed with all the trials that are going on now, because there's about nine PARP inhibitors in clinical development. Um, some of them, I think, are quite advanced and phase three trials are going on. We'll hear a lot more about it uh, in about an hour at the session this afternoon. Uh, so far as I know, none of the PARP inhibitors is licensed. So at the moment, the only access to them for patients is by taking part in a clinical trial. I will tell you that in the United States, the physicians I'm speaking with, words are very dramatic that they're using to describe their excitement for PARP inhibitors, especially for BRCA-positive ovarian cancer patients, that this is really a revolutionary breakthrough in the treatment of this disease for this particular subset of patients. I think um, certainly in, in my career, it is probably the most exciting thing we've come across. Um, the, in the experiments, the therapeutic ratio, by which we mean how much of the drug you need to get rid of the tumor compared with how much you need to cause toxicity, uh, is several hundred. And of course, most of the cancer drugs we use, the therapeutic ratio is about is about one. You have to use a really toxic dose before much happens to the tumor at all. So, so this is, I think it's a very exciting development. And the reason, the reason why it works is also well understood. Uh, so if you like, you're not having to take it on trust that it just works because it works. It works because we know how it works. As a BRCA positive patient, as a survivor of ovarian and breast, I must, one, thank you for making time to talk to us as you're running to a session, and it's really an honor. Thank you very much. Professor Hilary Calvert joining us from London, UK.